Whether you're new to cycling and about to purchase your first bike, or an experienced rider treating yourself to an upgrade, it's not unlikely that your next bike purchase could well be from an online retailer. Online retailers selling direct to consumer are growing and sell thousands of bikes globally. When your bike arrives, it'll often be in a box like this in a partially assembled state, which often means that it's been built and serviced by a professional mechanic and then partially disassembled so that it will fit inside the box for shipping. Now in this video, we're gonna show you the last few steps of the process so that you can go from this to this. Now we know that not everyone owns a work stand and while using a work stand will make building your new bike a little bit easier, you can absolutely do it without one. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. It's really straightforward, should only take about 20 minutes, so let's get going. You only need a few basic tools to do this job. A set of Allen keys so that you can adjust the various bolts on the bike. A torque wrench so that you can get things to the correct torque, particularly important on carbon bikes. Some cutters or scissors so that you can remove packaging easily. A tape measure is useful for setting up your bike measurements, especially if you know them already. And also some grease or carbon assembly paste can also come in handy too. If you're new to cycling and don't currently own any of these tools, then I would strongly recommend that you invest in them as they're basic tools that are incredibly useful and will save you money in the long run. When you first open your box, top tip, look out for industrial staples that are used to clamp it shut. These can be very sharp and you don't want to catch your thumb on them. Now inside, you'll typically find one of the wheels removed and strapped to the side of the bike. You'll also probably have a box with important bits in, so I'm just gonna take that out. And put that to one side. We'll need that later. And then lift the entire bike out of the box. Nice color, isn't it? I'm now gonna set about removing the packaging from the bike and you might need your scissors or cutters for this. Fortunately on this bike, a lot of the bits are connected by these Velcro pads and straps, which is great because they're reusable. I'd also recommend that you carefully remove the packaging and keep it to one side. A nice place to keep it all together is inside the box that your bike came in. This is just in case you have a problem with your bike and for whatever reason, you need to pack it up again and return it. If you are using scissors or cutters to remove packaging, then be very careful not to scratch your frame or accidentally cut through any cables as well. <laughs> if your bike comes with a box of bits, now's the time to open it and put them all carefully to one side and sort through them. Manufacturers are getting better and better at shipping direct to consumer, making the process as simple and as pain-free as possible. So you can see here in this box, we've actually got some assembly paste, which we'll need for the seat post in a minute, and also a torque wrench and the necessary head attachments for doing all the requisite bolts on the bike. We're next going to insert the seat post, but before you do, you should prime it. Now, if your bike is made from alloy, an alloy post and an alloy frame, then you should just use regular grease. But if either component is made from carbon fiber, this bike is a carbon bike and a carbon seat post, you should use carbon assembly paste or something like this carbon gripper. This bike happens to come with a small sachet of assembly paste, which is very useful. But if yours doesn't and you don't own any grease or carbon assembly paste, then I'd recommend buying some. It's not expensive and it regularly comes in handy. You want to apply a thin layer of assembly paste or grease to your seat post. And I find it's best to do this with a glove on as it just helps not get it on your skin. Grease will stop an alloy post from seizing and getting stuck inside the frame if you need to remove it later. An assembly paste on carbon will help increase friction and stop it slipping inside the frame. Now, before you pop the seat post in, you'll probably have to loosen the bolt 
for the seat post collar. This will either be a regular seat post collar at the top here, or it could be an integrated one, such as on this canyon, where there's a little bolt at the back. This is usually done up when the bike is shipped so that the bolt just doesn't fall out in transit. But I'm just gonna loosen it and open it so that the post can be inserted. At this point, I'm not too worried about getting the seat height exact. I'll worry about that when the bike's fully built. I'm just gonna get it in and uh, in a rough ballpark. I've just nipped the seat post clamp bolt up lightly for now, just to stop the seat post slipping and secure it, but we'll tighten it properly later on. The other thing to be aware of is that if your bike is a DI2 bike, it might have the internal battery housed within the seat post, in which case there'll usually be a little cable just popping out the top of the frame and secured with some tape. You'll need to take that tape off and connect the cable into the seat post battery and then install the seat post. But when you do, just be careful not to catch the cable between the seat post and the frame as this can cause it to tear. We're now gonna fit the bars and stem. Now this bike has a fancy all-in-one handlebar and stem, but many bikes, in fact, most bikes, come with a separate bar and stem. And in that case, you'll usually find that the stem is connected already to the bike, although it might be twisted round slightly. Now to make it straight, you simply undo the bolts, loosen them, and then that'll allow you to twist the stem round to get it straight on the steerer tube. You'll also often find that the stem comes in the highest position possible. And a lot of the time people like to have their stem in a different position with you know, spaces above it and their stem may be slammed. If you want to adjust the height of your stem, then we have a separate video that goes into more detail on how to properly do that. In the case of this bike, I'm gonna remove the top cap so that I can then lift the stem and bars onto the steerer tube. that to one side. If you are putting your stem onto the steerer tube, again, you'll probably find that you have to undo the stem bolts as these have been tightened up usually to stop them falling out during transit. Now, when doing your stem bolts up, whether it's on the actual stem onto the steerer tube or the face plate of the stem, if you have separate bars and stem, it's important to do them up to the correct torque. You'll often find the correct torque is either in the instructions your bike came with or it's usually written in tiny writing on the stem. In this case, it is seven Newton meters, so I'll do that. Again, don't be too worried about getting the correct torque on all the bolts in the stem uh, and handlebars just yet. We can adjust them and then we will make sure that they're torqued up properly later on so that the bike is safe to ride. Now, hopefully, your bike will come with the shifters and bar tape pre-installed on the handlebar like mine has. But if it hasn't, don't worry, we have a separate video that can show you how to change your handlebars and all the information is covered off in that. Now it's starting to look a bit more like a bike, we're gonna install the front wheel. Now if your bike has disc brakes like mine does, you'll probably need to remove this pad spacer from the front caliper. This is there to stop the pads coming together and closing when the bike's in transit. If your bike is a rim brake bike, it will probably have a quick release skewer. But if it's a disc brake bike like this one, it'll probably have a through axle. And it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the end of either the quick release lever or the through axle before inserting it as this will stop it seizing in the future. Fortunately, this through axle comes pre treated with a bit of grease on the end, which is useful. So I'm gonna insert that now from the other end. <laughs> when installing your front wheel, it's also better to have the bike on the ground like this, as you can make sure with weight on it that the wheel is properly inserted into the dropouts of the fork. Some through axles have a lever built onto the end of them, which you can use to tighten them. Others uh, have a socket that you simply insert an Allen key into. 
Now that all the components are fitted, it's a case of doing the finishing touches to make sure that everything's in the right position, where you want it, and all the bolts are done up to the correct torque so that your bike is safe to ride. Starting with the stem, make sure that the stem bolts that connect onto the steerer tube are loose, and then nip up the top cap bolt. This usually only has to be finger tight and is there to make sure that everything is seated properly in the headset. Using your torque wrench, you're then gonna do up the stem bolts. The exact torque you require will depend on your bike and stem. It's usually between five and seven Newton meters. Check on your bike. In this case, it's seven Newton meters. So I'll adjust my torque wrench accordingly and do them up. If you have a separate bar and stem and not an integrated one like I have, it's a good idea as well to swing a leg over the bike and just have a look. You want to be checking that the front wheel is bang on in line with the frame. If it's not, you might need to loosen your stem and adjust it so that you can get that perfectly aligned. Also, put your hands on the shifters and check you're happy with the position of them. If your bike has a separate bar and stem, you can adjust the, uh, the angle of the bar by loosening the stem bolts and then rotating the bar back and forwards. You can also adjust the position of the shifters on the handlebars by pulling back the shifter hood here and getting access to an Allen bolt there, which will allow you to move the shifter up and down or tilt it inwards slightly. Now I'm gonna set the saddle height. Now, you might know this from a previous bike and simply be able to transfer it across, but if you're new to cycling, you might not be sure what your saddle height is yet, and this will take a little bit of trial and error. We do have videos that can help you find your ideal saddle height, and I'd suggest getting it in a ballpark where you can sit on the bike, take it for a test ride, or maybe put it on a static trainer, and then have a look at our video of how to get it where you need it. When you do measure your saddle height though, one top tip is to always do it from the same place uh, so that it's consistent from bike to bike. And I always go from the center of the crank, so right the middle of the axle, and then go up to the middle of the saddle top. So that's coming out at 75 centimeters. When you're happy with your saddle height, nip up the seat post bolt. That again will have a torque that it's required to be for safety reasons. So use your torque wrench and also make sure the saddle is perfectly in line with the top tube. You don't want to be sitting on a wonky saddle. That's never any fun. Something else you may wish to adjust, and you can, is the angle of your saddle and the fore aft position of the saddle on the seat rail clamp. This is something that's fairly easy to do and will differ slightly from bike to bike depending on the design of the seat rail clamp, but you basically just need some Allen keys and then you can adjust it and it's a bit of trial and error to see what works for you and is comfortable. Now we'll assume that the company you bought your bike from serviced it before they sent it out to you, but things can get knocked in transit. So before you ride, it's worth checking that the brakes and gears are working properly. It's really useful if you've got a work stand to check this, as you can simply pop the bike in a stand. But if you don't, don't worry, there are other ways you can do it. And my sort of favorite way to check gears without a stand is to lift the bike up and put the saddle behind your neck. And that way you can then turn the cranks and check the gears as well and siphon through them. You'll want to rotate the wheels in the frame and check that the brakes aren't rubbing before you ride as well. Should just rotate freely and there should be no noise. If your bike has electronic gears, then it's a good idea to charge them as well before you go out on your first ride. And they may not even come charged at all when the bike comes new. If you are having an issue with your brakes rubbing, either rim brake or disc brake, or your gears aren't quite tuned properly and you want to know how to do it, you guessed it, we have videos that can show you how to do that as well. But if you find that no matter what you do, your gears can't be tuned properly and they're still not shifting perfectly from each cog to the next within the cassette, what might have happened is that your mech hanger has been bent in transit. This is something that can happen. The mech hanger is this little piece of metal that attaches the frame to the rear derailleur. Now, if that's bent, you may find that particularly in the middle of the cassette, you have some sticky shifting and it's not quite working properly. In the future, we are gonna make a video on how to replace or straighten 
your Met Kanya. Something I forgot is pedals, and that's because most bikes, unless they're entry level, don't come with pedals. You'll need to supply your own. And this is because most people have their own preferred style of clipless pedals that they're gonna wanna put on the bike. So before you do that, just apply a little bit of grease onto the threads of each pedal and then install them appropriately. Now, before you ride, one last thing to do is to check every single bolt on the bike is the correct torque. If you don't build bikes every day, it can be easy to miss one, and it's better that you discover this now in your garage than while tearing down a hair-raising descent. So there you have it, from box to bike in about 20 minutes, and it's a great way to learn more about how your bike is put together and some of the basics of bike maintenance, plus it saves you a bit of money rather than paying someone else to do it for you. And if you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. And also comment down below what maintenance videos you'd like to see us make in the future.